Welcome to Beyond the Road, the trucking industry podcast. Once again, I'm Eric, your host for this uh, this episode where we'll be digging into uh, shipping during the summer months. We just got finished up with May. Uh, last month's podcast was talking about uh, really over on Blitz Week. So we're just going to jump in and kind of do a whole kind of summer um, shipping situation and uh, brought some of the, the, the big hitters, uh, guests here today. We got Mike and Dean, if you guys wanna go ahead and introduce yourselves. Yeah, thanks Eric, I'm Mike, uh, sales manager here at Anderson Trucking. Um, been with the company six years, started underneath you, so kind of your protege here. <laughs> <laughs> protege, yes. there we go, I like it already. Uh, I'm Dean, uh, been with ATS for uh, six years as well, um, and a uh, sales team manager here as well, and uh, we all started underneath Eric, so we uh, getting the band back together. Bringing the team back together. Here we are. Now we're all sales managers. Yeah. Huh? Look at that. What a deal. It's like the uh, Shanahan coaching tree in football, huh? This there is what go. we do. Anyway. Um, but no, thanks, guys, for taking some time this afternoon to to uh, come over here and, and put together some uh, information for our customers. But um, like I said, kind of the intro, we just wrapped up May, um, talked a lot about Blitz Week and uh, kind of the, the, the concerns that shippers and customers should have kind of when they are when they're shipping around that time. And I guess... Just uh, opening up, what was kind of your feeling um, that you guys have experienced kind of through Blitz Week? Capacity seemed to tighten up pretty much like we thought it would this year. Um, in certain areas, it got tight for us. Um, in other areas, it seemed to be just fine. So um, for me, it was as expected, I guess. Um, I knew it was going to be tight and tough and push through it. So, Yeah, I think uh, depending on what areas uh, uh, you had, you know, where you needed the capacity. Uh, we saw some stuff in the southeast. Uh, that seemed to tighten up more than, than anticipated. Yep. Uh, we saw where the Midwest opened up more than anticipated. Um, I think it just depending on where you had freight um, or where your customers are based out of, where your shippers are based out of, and that just depending on what you saw um, overall. But it's kind of, as, as Mike said, it's pretty much what we expected. Right. It, it was an awkward midweek this year. I remember it being like on Wednesday. a Monday to Thursday or a, a Wednesday to Friday in years past, and this year was a – Tuesday to Thursday, intense inspection. So it was kind of a, a weird midweek thing for me, I guess. Yeah, and I don't think we really saw the, the shippers slow down much. You know, I think that they, um, it was kind of an average week, I would say, for, for my team anyway. It seemed to be an average week, and it wasn't so much a uh, shippers are holding tight because they're worried about the rates or things like that. I think it was just kind of was an average week, and I think that, that Tuesday to Thursday is what caused that. Um, it didn't start the week off on a Monday. It didn't end the week with the Friday. It just kind of, mm-hmm. kind of just rolled fairly smoothly. Yeah, it seemed pretty smooth on on on, on my stand, and my I guess my side too. But like you said, Dean too. I think it's just some of those areas like Southeast. I don't know if probably a combination when you when you wrap in uh, Blitz Week along along with kind of produce season. Yeah. Um, you know, with just the, the 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 amount of freight coming out of those particular areas, and and then more. Uh, constraint on trucks mm-hmm. seemed to kind of that area uh up on texas um was kind of another seemed to be another struggle through blitz week but yeah i think it depended on the equipment as well what was needed so you know obviously in the southeast anything with dry van or reefer um kind of hit hard you yeah know, down that way versus open deck um where you look at the texas market things like that oklahoma um all those ones you know that's that's the open deck side where that's where you get that freight this time of year hitting hard um, and that was the, more the crunch that I saw was for the open deck in those areas and, and okay. kind of your enclosed trailer side, the other side. So um, just, to, again, depending on where you're at. I was fortunate enough to ship out of the Midwest. So okay. <laughs> we, we, we seem to move things pretty fairly easily and, and smooth. So I was fortunate. Would you say your teams or your team is more open deck freight or van freight? Uh, I would say I'm a uh, good diverse market for, for us, you know, our customer base. Okay. You know, we, we, uh, I would say we're probably a 60-40 open deck. Okay. Um, but we really actually had a lot more freight uh, than I anticipated um, for the dry van side that popped up here this week. All right. I'm uh, probably a 75-25 open deck. Okay. Getting into some reefer stuff now, finding some, some customers in the northeast that ship refrigerated stuff. So, yeah, 75-25 is All right. where I'm at. Wonderful. Thanks for that recap. Appreciate that. Um. Yeah, I guess let's hop into the, the, the main topic of, of conversation for, for this month is really, you know, we were kind of talking about shipping over June, um, but kind of wrapping some things all together and just kind of talk about those summer months. 
um, and really kind of starting off with really, you know, I guess construction, right? Like, like road construction. And we're starting to see up on 94 here, the, the, the road construction barrels, um, um, being put on the side of the road, uh, you know, just construction in general, home construction, renovations, those types of things is something that can definitely, um, affect shipping. Right. And I think that's kind of a like, leaning on the open deck market more is the construction season. I mean, just, it just happens that way. Um, when that opens up, you know, you got to remember that half the United States is frozen, you know, and except for also now, you know, yep. us here in Minnesota, for example, um, or any spot across the United States has their seasonality of, of construction. Um, and right now the whole United States is wide open. It doesn't matter what construction industry you're in, if it's road construction, you know, house construction or, you know, water tower construction. It doesn't even matter yeah. what commodity it is. This is when it's prime time. Mm -hmm. So this is where to start. They've, they've gotten their sales over the winter months. Um, they've gotten their, their kind of log for the summer of what they're doing, um, ledger for that matter, and what, what the priority is, and this is when it hits. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun time. Definitely a lot more open deck freight moving right now up here in Minnesota than it is in the middle of January, right? You know, um, with that though comes comes some stressors. I mean, like you'd mentioned, 94 is under construction. They may route a truck off 94. So now, you know, figuring in those extra miles, that extra time, it, it all goes into play. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 a balancing act for us. Yeah, and I think that also into that too is you know when you're talking these big constructions, the the heavy haul side, the over dimensional stuff that. They have to go through these construction sites and they don't fit. Yeah. So they have to route around. And, and when you're talking about the legal hours and the things like that, that they can actually run and then they have to route around and, and adjust their route and adjust their miles and, and all that, you know, has an issue with getting stuff, you know, on sites on time. Mm -hmm. Those construction sites depend on that. We see a lot overnight driving now. Yep. Um, not able to drive during the day because they're out working and you can't fit through. So pushing pushing that overdimensional freight to nighttime hours as opposed to driving during daylight so so yeah, really as a shipper i mean i guess it sounds like uh, construction is kind of twofold right it's 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 the being cognizant of the driver's route and, and the time frame it can take so being kind of open on that if if there's some some issues with with road construction and things like that but then also at the same time construction as in uh, you, Dean, you talked about like water tower construction and we're talking about home construction. So there's just more, more freight for those types of things being moved, obviously across the entire lower 48, as opposed to during the winter times, like you said, Mike. So then, so there's just more freight moving, um, which obviously then will, uh, you know, tighten up capacity and, and, and can, can affect, you know, rates and, and such moving forward too. So, um, what else do we got here? Um, talk about, you know, agriculture, egg produce, another, another thing kind of for really any shipper, even if you're not in, in produce, as we kind of talked about as, as it blended in with, with, um, with blitz week. But if you're not, if you're not even, even in that industry sector, um, you know, how does that affect overall shippers? Yeah, I think, uh, it's, it's two sides of that fence that I, uh, work with my team on. Um, the beginning side is you're running, uh, equipment to these places, to these produce, um, farms, if you want to call it that, uh, produce companies that have that they need the equipment. So you could be running an open deck in early in the year, then comes harvest season, right? Oh. So then it's the dry van side and the reefers turn and, and things like that, um, which then of course that higher demand happens. Um, you know, rates can go up um, depending on, you know, the time of year and what side of the country you're on. I mean, it doesn't matter if produce season is is peaches, you know, or you're down in the Southeast and, and you know, Georgia peaches, or if you're up in Idaho, Spudville, uh, moving potatoes, you know, it's just the same thing. It's, it's just a capacity crunch, no matter how you look at it, because they're in, there's higher demand during those times of year for those ty that type and, of equipment. And drivers know that. So mm -hmm, absolutely, they want to position themselves in those areas. So if they're taking one load and it's going to Georgia, they're going to be more prevalent to take it knowing there's freight coming back out of there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's van freight coming out, there's reefer freight coming out as opposed to when produce and egg season comes to an end now going down there's is more a little more difficult because there's not as much coming, coming out. out right so they the you know drivers tend to focus on that during the seasonal stuff like that as well so yeah i think 
I think on the ATS Learning Hub, I think we do have some kind of seasonality stuff like that. So any shippers out there looking for that, I mean, hop on to ATSInc.com and look for the Learning Hub. Um, like Mike, you bring up a very valid point as if, if you're shipping into particular areas throughout the year, it's, it's advantageous as a, as, a, as a shipper, right? Like right now, yeah, you want to be shipping freight into Georgia, into Texas, into Florida, because there's an abundance of freight coming out into Southern California. Um, where sometimes during the year when, when, like you said, when produce stops, it flips and it's, it's, it costs more than because drivers either it's, it's cheaper freight coming out or there's no freight coming out. And the drivers kind of are concerned of how long I'm going to have to wait or where do I have to deadhead to, to get a next load. And that, that usually those costs can be moved on to the, to the customer or the shipper because that's just an expense occurred. Right. And hopefully that the, you know, the companies, transportation companies that are out there are trying to help those drivers, those companies out that are, so we can piggyback on those loads where mm-hmm. they have a, a load going in, but they also know that they have a load going out, you know, yep. and they can work with these companies. And, and as a brokerage, you can work with, you know, who, whoever you're working with on that inbound load, you already got an outbound load for them as well. Hopefully it's a going to a spot that they want to go, um, either getting them home or getting back to wherever they, um, wherever their home base is, you know, wherever they're working out of, or just going in a direction they want to go where the freight is. So it's just a matter of, you know, working with your team and working with your, your, all sides of the fence of, of the transportation department and that you have is set up and, and getting these, these loads just to kind of not stop movement, depending on this working with the customers. Right. And I think you, you bring up a very valid point is, is working with as a customer, as a shipper, working with your transportation partners, yep. right? Like having those discussions and, and, and something I think we do really wear well here at ATS is, is, is to, dev- providing that information to our customers or, or really anybody out there. Like I said, the, you can go to the learning hub and if you're a customer or not, you can get hundreds of pieces of content and, and blogs and videos of, of how to help any shipper help yourself out there become less stressed, I guess, in what you're doing I mean, and have more knowledge. The freight calendar that we created, you know, is, is one that just look at that and you can kind of see what the year is going to look like. Yep. Um, you know, it's just, it's a guide of, of what's going to happen at what time of year and, and you know, the stuff is on there, you know, so it, it's just a matter of you having, having uh, your salesperson help you out with that or having, you know, this, like Eric's saying, we you can go in there yourself and just <laughs> dive into it and, and there's so much information on there that, I mean, well, the three of us can go on there and learn something that we didn't know before either. And that information is what sets us apart. I mean, if we're willing to have that conversation with our customers Absolutely. and our truck drivers, hey, we know it's a, a tight market down here. Produce hasn't started yet. Um, head down there. We'll, you know, Next week, it should kick off and we'll have stuff coming out of there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, For sure. And then we got, uh, what else we have here going on? Um, as much as I don't, like talking about it already. I mean, school's still in session here, but really come June, um, people are getting ready for back to school already, right? Um, the, 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 the warehouses, the, the retail stores are getting that stuff on the road to stock up to get ready for the push. Right after, uh-huh. right after the 4th, it seems like, boom, back to school. Backpacks and pencils are already at uh, your local stores yeah it literally works just like the holidays do right i mean school isn't a holiday per se but it's treated like one almost you know soon's you know fourth of july is done how fast do you see halloween stuff in the stores right you know it works the same way as soon as school's out fourth of july is kind of what people focus on next and boom school stuff's in the stores as soon as that little transition happens and that's a lot of again we go back to dry van freight so it opens it up again for that market you know its capacity is going to tight tighten up for our shippers but drivers are going to start seeing a lot more freight again Mm -hmm. and it falls in line with normally tail end of some ag stuff and now okay we're going to start moving pencils and shoes and backpacks um now you're just moving it out of warehouses and into department stores and big box stores which brings up appointments Mm -hmm. and you know multiple trucks at these dcs you know distribution centers that waiting in line. So now you've got drivers sitting and waiting mm-hmm. brings a whole, a whole nother aspect to what we got to deal with. Yeah. That those appointment times always throw a wrench in everything. Uh, you know, you have to have them. They're nature of the beast. I get why they're there. Um, you just have to plan accordingly with your shipper, um, and with your end customer, whoever we're delivering to, um, just to make sure that we have the, all the information correct the first time around and that will help everyone out. But right. You know, there's time of year. 
And then two, uh, back to school. We got we have kids getting out of school. Um, as as a shipper, just understand that hey, like there's there's vacations going on. Um, there's just there's more traffic on the road, right? Which in turn can can affect transit times. Um, you know, drivers being able to get to point A to point B as efficiently as possible. Right. Mm-hmm. People taking vacations. Roads bottlenecked up with other families out. Yeah. And the road construction, right? Yeah, you the road construction. You people on the road <laughs> yeah. and uh, and a bunch of cones and. I mean, with everyone out there with the family truckster, you know, going to Wally World, you know, they, yeah. they, they you know, they, they run into issues, and, and so this is what happens this time of year. I mean, it's just you, the trucks are on the road, um, families are on the road. You know, there's just more and more traffic, like like Eric was saying. It, it, it's just more out there to get through. And I'm afraid my Midwest accent came through on that cones. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> the northern minnesotan in me there you go um so we got all that taken care of and i guess the, the big one that we talked about and dean kind of prefaced a little bit about the fourth of july right it's not necessarily june but the fourth of july um typically is one of the two biggest months or holidays excuse me that the drivers are looking to head home you have christmas and the fourth it's kind of their their winter vacation their summer vacation um and and that can really put a wrench into to shipping not just after the fourth but but leading up to it and and, and after i guess what are your guys experience some thoughts yeah there? um this year with the fourth landing on a thursday you know a lot of companies and and things are shut down on friday already they get that day off um when you're a driver that's that's already a four-day week well, let's cut her down and and try to get back home by wednesday you know so not like we had been talking earlier eric and Drivers that would like to take a 2,000 mile run on a Monday might only be looking to take a seven or 800 mile run to get back home. Um, take an extra day off and have a five or six day weekend as opposed to coming in on Thursday morning and having to get everything set up for that 4th of July get together they could be having. So Right, so I mean, definitely as a customer, if you, if you tend to have some longer mile runs, um, you definitely wanna look at getting those out either the week before or holding those to the week after, or otherwise it can get can get expensive, right? With, with layovers, um, and 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 or just drivers holding on loads um, for for the long week. And so it's making sure as a, as a shipper, um, if if you're a, of an outbound shipper, those those customers that you work with, and who is receiving your freight, you know, you want to talk to them to make sure. Hey, are you guys going to be open on Friday? And what are your hours? And obviously any. Any customer service or op, uh, customer service team for, for like for us, you know, we're going to be making those calls too. You know, making sure, hey, are you have normal hours on Friday? And asking your own team. I mean, as a shipper, do you know if all your guys that are there loading going to be there? Did they take vacation? You know, you know, as a logistics manager, and, you, and you're planning these truckloads out of there, and all of a sudden you walk back to your warehouse or shipping yard, and you know, all your shipping guys out there, guys and girls in the warehouse took Wednesday off too to get a five-day weekend mm-hmm. I think we're seeing a lot more of that too when you, when with a the, it doesn't matter if it's the shipper or you know the end customer you know whoever you're delivering to um, we're seeing that where they seem to be closed more on these windows of opportunity like the July 5th this year that Friday yeah you're you're piggybacked in between um, the holiday and then the weekend and there's more and more tendency to actually the place might be open. There's people there. It's still, but there's a skeleton crew, and they either have abbreviated hours or they're just not going to be open. The shipping department or or the receiving side, it might not be open. Um, that seems to be more and more from in my six years anyway, um, from when we first started. That there was people are usually open. You could you know receive that day or yeah. even ship that day, uh, but now it seems to be the opposite way. So you're stuck, like you guys are saying, with holding those over until the following Monday, which then they want it builds up the cost right so right as opposed to you know as opposed to a right. wednesday to friday it's right. a wednesday to monday it's, which is a huge difference right That's especially huge. through the holidays and we know there's less drivers there's mm-hmm. there, while there's less drivers on the road there's still drivers out there that that take advantage of the capacity right. crunch right and so um those the, the rates uh, go up just like anything else in supply and demand and yeah and and it can greatly increase for holding that time i mean they can do a they can run a lot of miles wednesday to Wednesday to Monday instead of sitting around Wednesday to Monday. Right. And right. we haven't even talked about if it's an overdimensional load, yeah. they legally can't even run from Wednesday to Wednesday night till Monday morning. 
it. Right. You know, I mean, if you're shipping right. overdimensional stuff and you got to get it there before Monday, or you better plan shipping the week prior because come Wednesday, sometimes at midnight, you're shut down until Monday at sunrise. I think some I was even reading like noon the down the third. Yeah. Right. Like noon on right. Wednesday, right. like yeah. because you start getting people. To, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, every state's different and, you know, we do a really good job. Um, shout out to Derek Brutker, who usually puts that stuff together right. for us yep. and provides us that information to, to really prepare ourselves and help us prepare our customers and our shippers to, to plan accordingly for that. And like you said, Mike, it's every state's different and some, you know, maybe, it's, maybe you can't run at all on Wednesday and some it's, you know, dusk or whatever, yep. but you just, you know, they're, they're making sure those states are just making sure, Hey, we're going to have more activity on the roads. People getting off of work early heading to the into the cottage or the cabin or on vacation and uh, you know we don't want uh those individuals dealing with 14 foot wide loads or something anything like that right right that and of course the construction going on yeah. construction <laughs> it all it comes, it all full comes full circle comes full, yeah so then you got to route around that and you can't even deliver you can't go anywhere so you know it's just part of the nature of the beast of of fourth of july right and it, and then and then we talk about you know the fourth of july on a thursday um and it does even just bleeding into that next week right it's it's it still affects shipping so you get to fourth is what eighth july 7th eighth whatever that monday is um you you have drivers are still at home um and if you're looking to get something shipped out right away in the morning um there's not going to be a lot of a lot of drivers out there you know Uh, they're They're already on the road right they're either they're either offloading elsewhere because they've held the load all for five days, or you know they're 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 coming out of their house and and you know their last day of vacation and so they just kind of wanna just kind of take their time. I, I wouldn't want to set my alarm early to, to to head out either too. So um, you know shipping on Monday mornings typically is pretty tough anyway. But you throw in that holiday that long holiday weekend, and um, and it, it is very difficult. So I mean I would say as a shipper. I would definitely take that into account, and if you can, if you can plan on, on on Monday afternoon, uh, Tuesday, whatever it may be, um, after a holiday can certainly help out. Yeah, I think uh, if some of these customers that that we have, um, of course, you know, Monday that Monday after the fourth, when you come off of a holiday like that, they've sold how much of their goods in their store, you know, so they're going to want loads picked up right after the fourth, so they can get restocked. You yeah. know, um, when it comes down to vacations or, or holidays and people spend money, right? The end user spends money and those shelves have to get restocked. Doesn't matter what it is. So there's a, there's a crunch in capacity coming off. And like Eric was saying with that, uh, drivers, if they're coming out of the house and they're not so much in a rush and, and things like that, well, you know what, that Monday afternoon, Tuesday into Wednesday, I mean, it could go even further than that, but yeah. you know, it's going to be a, a, a spike in overall available load count just those three days compared to the previous week so be flexible right as a a shipper the more flexible you can be around around holidays around things that we talk about here that that can affect that um is just going to help you out with 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 available availability with trucks arriving with with your cost all those types of things and being flexible with what kind of truck you need um very good point you know it, it could be that you may want it on a on an open deck trailer, but hey, if we can, if you have a way of loading it in a van, let us know. You know, any it opens up a window of capacity that we might not have thought of two weeks earlier because you're used to shipping vans or open deck. Well, now, hey, would you load this if we can get it in? Because right, the drivers aren't out of the house yet. Right, we'll have a, a bigger pool to to reach out and contact and hopefully secure a truck. So. Right. There's other, there's other equipment out there, you know, and that's the biggest thing. If we can figure out it, it depending on what you need, especially when it comes down to securement, yeah. you know, that's really the telltale sign of what it can go on and if it needs a loading dock or not. Right. Those are the yep. two main things, right? Do we have to secure to a sidewall or can we just secure it to the deck? Um, can we throw a tarp on it? Can it be in a Conestoga? Can it not be in a Conestoga? Can it fit on a hot shot? Get on a hot shot. You know, anything you can open up capacity um, during that week after or even the week before. Um, depending on what the load is, you know, and, and that'll open up the, the doors immensely. Being flexible with appointments or being flexible with pickup times and days and equipment, that's the best bang for the buck you're going to get right there. Mm-hmm. I, mean, we've seen, I mean, just just touching briefly on the hot shot stuff. I mean, like I've been here ATS uh, 11 years. I'm also almost 11 years. And we've I've really seen our our, our network of hot shots really, really grow. 
um, especially the last couple of years. I don't know if it's because the freight rates keep kind of continuing to increase, um, but the, the hot shot availability or the customers that we're moving hot shot freight for has, has grown exponentially. And so, you know, and, and we do have content out there. Like I, I know, I know uh, one of the other uh, sales managers ha- ha- had a customer meeting and they weren't quite sure what a hot shot was and presented them that information. And, and they were able to significantly save on the customer's transportation mm-hmm. spend. Um, and I think they're all exclusively moving stuff on hot shots. So yeah, the, the more flexible you can be on the type of equipment you can load and, and, and can, can greatly help out. And as long as we can, you know, give that information to our customer, I think it'll be easier for them to make the decision. You know, right. like you said, some of them don't even know they exist or, or what they can haul or how much they can haul. And, and we've got on that ATS Learning Hub numerous articles that we can share that gives them that information. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. And, and the thing is with the, you know, working with the sales reps, whoever their sales rep is, to um, that sales rep should be able to provide that information to them, you know, when they're sending you a quote out or mm-hmm. whatever it is, whatever they're moving. Here's a, you know, flatbed step deck price, and then here's a hot shot price, and, and just give them those rates up front with the information. Yep. You know, content supply it with them with your rates you know that customer has everything they need right then and there to make that informed decision and then something we kind of i i kind of skipped unfortunately was we got in i was too excited to talk about the fourth i, I mean i like barbecues we and, love the know, fourth I grilling like cabin man. time it's grilling, grilling. Well, we'll get into that later. I mean, you're the grill master and we want to know what the new hot grill is for the upcoming <laughs> barbecue season dean but um but prior to the fourth they have the end of quarter Right, and that's that's something that we we sh- I probably should we should have touched on maybe jumping before we jumped into the fourth, but they kind of blend together, right? We're coming to the f- we're, we have the fourth coming, and we see it every year where that's kind of on the horizon, and we're paying attention to that, but then it gets lost like end of a quarter, you know, end of month, the end of month kind of plays any it. month plays into mm-hmm. a, a, the capacity and, and and freight volumes increasing because of just business numbers they need to get this off the dock or whatever uh, but you know we see it more prevalent uh at the end of a quarter right mm-hmm. and so we have the friday before the fourth week is end of quarter so we're gonna see a spike in that freight too right yep absolutely yeah. i mean outside of of your christmas new year's end of year yeah you know this is the second worst one out there i mean um you you roll in from the end of month end of quarter and then right against that is the 4th of July. I mean, that Monday, we just talked about it earlier, that that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, well, that's right after in a month and a quarter. Yep. So you have a crunch for end of month, end of quarter, especially, and then you're going to have the crunch hitting Monday immediately. So that capacity crunch in theory, um, sp- increased rates that can happen, things like that can go from the Wednesday, Thursday for end of month and end a quarter. Of June. End of June. Yep to the following Wednesday, Wednesday after the, the fourth. fourth. So you're dealing with two full weeks, full weeks of what we can see during this time of year. So I think it's really crucial to have, um, as we talked about, the, the willingness to open up your capacity of, of equipment needed, of when a load can pick up. It, and if you can give people like a large window like that, if there's availability for that way, that'd be, I mean, it's going to be the most cost-effective route for you. To right. Do. Absolutely, and as a shipper. I don't know if any of you guys have had it, but I've had it that – End of second quarter is actually the end of the fiscal year for some of my for customers. Some. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's a, it's a big end of quarter. Like yep. they need to get everything off. Mm-hmm. It's it's big for their books. Yep. So you know, leading up into the fourth, and and you've got your AP person. Hey, we got to get it off our dock. This mm-hmm. is gonna go. We it's it's the end of our fiscal year. Yep. I got to close the books. Again, it's just another stressor that we'll see in urgency and and tighten up capacity because companies need numerous trucks to get all their stuff out and one thing that we should probably touch on too that we a lot of customers i think and shippers kind of forget about that we can offer is warehousing you know so if they need to get it off their dock because they want it for fiscal year they want it for end of quarter they want it just to be gone yeah we can warehouse it you know we can bring it to a warehouse we can drop it off we can pick it up after the fourth we can whatever is needed we can offer those solutions you know that it's not just trucking it's what else do you need for them to meet what if it's the books or if it's just simple we just need to get create space on our dock because yep. they don't have the room anymore yep well we'll create the room for them flexibility across the board flexibility on equipment flexibility on when you can ship flexibility on 
Where do you bring that stuff to Absolutely. if you just got to get off your docks, right? Full just service. Being, being, just be flexible. Yep. Um, I guess anything else that, that off the top of your head on, on shipping or kind of things to take into account, I would say probably June, July months, you know, um, you get into August. We, we did talk about back to school, um, that bleeds into August. Um, continually talking about holidays. So we talked about Memorial last week, last podcast, excuse me, talking about the fourth. Now probably much the same thing. It was when it comes to, to Labor Day, um, Summer so, storms, you know, we haven't touched storm. on yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, that's a good the one. Tornadoes that have been hitting re- oh, that's a good you know, recently. Again, things we don't see in the later half of the year. You know, I mean, up north we see the winter storms, but look at what just happened in Oklahoma and Texas. Texas yeah. is flooded. You know, Oklahoma had tornadoes rip through. You know, FEMA comes in and, and all of a sudden capacity tightens because they're sending everything they got to the people to get aid down there. Yep. So. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that FEMA. I mean, that the st- when summer storms, how does how does FEMA and that affect? Well, rates get affected big time because yep. now you've got government money being handed out, and uh, not that it's an open checkbook, but it's it's a, a larger checkbook because we got to get aid to you know the our American areas. citizens yeah. that are affected. Yeah, it's got to get so, there. There's no so now if. If, if you've got a driver that I'm trying to haul a load of soybeans or potatoes somewhere, but FEMA comes in and, and they need bottled water down there and they're paying more, two times more per mile is what we are. I mean, if I'm a driver, I'm grabbing that load and, and we send drivers as a, as a company down to these areas just to stage and, and run back and forth for FEMA and, and dedicate numbers of trucks just for that area to get things moving again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the biggest thing is not only just to get aid in there, they got to get equipment in there. Um, if you talk about tornadoes or hurricanes or things like that that happen, you know, Clean. generators and everything, that the, all the cleanup equipment that has to go into those areas just to, I mean, dumpsters, hauling dumpsters down there, moving garbage trucks, whatever it is to get down there. And, and even, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, And then traffic into those areas. I was, I thing. was down in Florida two years ago when they had the storm down there, big storm down there. And as we were coming through Georgia into Florida, all the tree cutting services, I mean, mm-hmm. miles and miles of yep. one ton Chevys pulling, you know, saws and hoist, man hoist and all that. And yep. It just clogged up the road. Hot shots. Uh, one hot ton shots. Chevys. That's what and it al- is. And along with that too, with, with the, the major kind of FEMA storms, um, shippers just recognizing like if you're open deck, and you are delivering. I mean, a lot of open decks aren't backing up to a dock, and just you know they can offload in the warehouse, right? They're 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 outside in the elements, and so so you could have a driver show up on on a previous load to to deliver, and then heading to grab another shipment that afternoon. But if there's lightning, there's weather related, and the, and and that site shuts down, saying, hey, we can't, we're not d- delivering or accept receiving freight until tomorrow or whatever it may be. You know that that can greatly affect um, a shipper and, and their their calendar and the freight that they need to get off, right? So I really think partnering with with a transportation provider that has has a network that can help alleviate those things because you don't know what's going to happen, right? Um, but as but as a customer, like it, 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 do you have a partner that hey, we are supposed to have three trucks to pick up this afternoon, but everybody's delayed. Can we find? Can you find us? three more trucks and, and, you know, um, that's definitely what you want to do as a shippers is have somebody in your arsenal that can, that can help out with that. I won't name any names on who can, <laughs> but it starts like with an A and ends with T S. <laughs> um, what else? Anything else? That was a good one, Mike. We yeah, didn't even was, have that. That was, that was a good one. I mean, it, summer months. Concert. Taught you well, Mike. I taught you well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Protégé. <laughs> concerts and festivals and the different things that the small towns even going through small towns you know um, they might have you route around um, it could be who knows what but uh, you know all these things play in you know it's the summer months you know the it's the busiest time of the year across the United States and it doesn't matter where you're really at it's just busiest time of year busiest time of travel yeah. and and when we see I mean just our load volumes increase absolutely right and so more people on the roads 
Mm-hmm. More stuff on the being hauled. And campers is and just, boats and yeah. everything. You know, that's yeah. that's all that's on the road and it's not on the road in the wintertime, but it's mm-hmm. on the road in the summertime. Just like the grass, everything comes back to life. All right, I think we covered that. I think we're, we're, we're pretty good. Um, if you, you know, we appreciate you guys' comments. If you have any comments or anything, hear anything else, like you want to hear anything else about kind of shipping issues that you do, you have questions on or, or think about throughout the summer, I'll certainly leave your comments. We love hearing about them and hearing and discussing your comments that we're going to kind of pull up a couple of comments or maybe one right now. Um, I've got a little list here. Not sure which one we want to to take account um which one do we talk about is it the uh if the brokers already have contracted re- yeah so so we got a comment here uh my philosophy is this if brokers brokers already have contracted rates with the shippers it's the brokers who's lowering the rates more profits for the brokers so what i guess what i'm kind of what we kind of looked at was was the contracted rates that that a broker or a transportation company has kind of with their with their customer right yeah right. you know, three months six months 12 month contracted rate um but then the the, the concern uh, on this comment is is that the brokers are are lowering the rates i think to, to pushing the, the rates to drive to, to the drivers which means more profits for the brokers i guess what what's your I response th- to that your thoughts taking into consideration that we're trying to price these in December, November for the entire upcoming year. Mm-hmm. Um, we just ran through a global pandemic that we would have never seen. And then the year after how the market shifted and then the year after that it shifted again. So in December, when we're getting all these lanes to quote and contract, we've got to make the best educated guess that we can for the whole year for, for, for a year. I mean, there, there's going to be months where we may be, paying more than we've got into the load, but mm-hmm. but it has to get done because the freight's got to move and it's contracted. And there might be months where this comment might be referring to is, you know, we're driving the market down a little bit, not to be making more money that month. It's, it's we have to do it for a year. We have to, you know, project this out for a year and who knows what fuel rates are going to do, what the economy is going to do, any of that stuff. I mean, California just put on some regulations this year that wasn't there last year. So rates are different going in there. You got to have, you know, your truck's got to be up to par for California. Mm-hmm. Some of us might not have figured that in. So, yeah, I mean, it, contract rates are crystal ball, right? I mean, that's, that's what you're doing. You're doing your best educated guess yep. um, that you can possibly get with contracted rates. Now, a lot of customers have shifted away from the year, but a lot of them still do a year, you mm-hmm. know, so it just depends on the customer. Um, and it's not trying to drive down the rates. I mean, Driving down rates, sure, that saves the end user um, maybe some money at the end of the day. I, you know, it's tough to say for sure, depending on the business. Um, but that's not the goal. The goal is just to provide the service that that customer's needs. You know, mm-hmm. um, you, you, if you go too low, you know, no one wins at that either. You know, it doesn't matter if it's the company that like ATS or if it's the driver. Um, no one's going to win that battle if it's too low. You know, but then you don't need to go too high. So now it goes the other way. So right. it's just finding that, re- building those relationships with those customers um, and building the relationship with the carriers. That's um, the big thing is I think, I think that, that that gets lost is, is, is while a, a broker has, has both, both sides, right? Correct. Like, yep. Hey, we, we, we want to take care of our customers um, and, and make sure that, that their expectations are being met. Um, the cost that they're paying for the freight is is fair uh, based on the current market, um, but also at the same time we've got our partners who are tr- the the truck mm-hmm. drivers out there, right? Like, we we want to take make sure we take care of them. We we, we don't want to drive down. I mean, as an ATS broker, I've never been anywhere else outside of ATS for. I mean, sold insurance before this, but but you know, understanding that relationship that we have from our operations team and what they do really well all the time with 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 their partner carriers. Is, is they look out for the best for them. And so, um, you know, I think that really helps out, helps what, how, how we're set up here is that, that, that on the sales side, we're, we're looking out, like we're, we're taking care of the customer on our operations team size. They're, they're phenomenal at building those relationships and making sure that their drivers and their carriers are taken care of. So, so, you know, we, 
we definitely are again find that that fair market price what is it going to take to execute we talk a lot about um to our customers but also understanding we got our tools we know what the market's like right, right. now we know it's, we can forecast maybe next week or after the fourth a little mm-hmm. bit because of our of our history and our experience and our knowledge um but you know it's it, it's it's like you said it's a crystal ball it's it's a it's up and down we talk about produce season right so when we're if we're doing a 12 month bid out of somewhere there's produce again like we talked about some months it's going to be like Right now, if you're coming out, you know, into Florida, the rates are, we're, we're going to have some good rate. You know, we're, we're going to be looking good on that. But then when things dry up, we got to take a look out. We're not going to go back to our customers and say, okay, hey, it's too tough now to come out of Florida. We need some more money. Right. Like we we you every broker should try not to do that. Right. Like these are contracted rates. We we set the expectation for we're gonna we're gonna hold our our, our bargain for that length of contract. So you got to take into account. So yeah, it's it's an ebb and flow up and down of the market with a steady contracted rate throughout that span of that contract. And, I don't know. Maybe you guys have noticed that I've noticed it too, that within the last year with the big swings in the market, um, our customers coming back and, and being able to renegotiate contracts. So if it is lopsided one way or another, there, there are opportunities for that as well. Having those conversations, but you, you know, have as long as you need to have that partnership, yes, right? And that, I, and I think that's the, that's the big thing. Yeah, as long as as long as you're trusted by your your customer that you're doing right by them, and and you know we're not we're not out here telling you we know exactly what the rate's going to be next January, but hey, we'll give you our best best number that we know will get it moved. We want to get your product moved, and then maybe come December you go, hey, can we renegotiate? Let's look at it. Yep. Yeah, like you said, it's all about building that relationship, that partnership, and and you know full exposure in both sides. That'll be the most bang that you're gonna get it right there. Yeah, I I think just being w- with with the relationship between your 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 broker or your your transportation provider, that partner that you have, and and that customer just just being transparent and and really wanting to work together for the long term. I like to say long haul as a little kitschy, ha, 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 <laughs> pun intended, but I avoided that until I made that stupid joke. So, um, but, but I think that's the big thing, right? I think we, we see that the, the, the customers that we have created and, and maintained for, or the ones that want to have that partnership are the ones that, that really are open to that. Right. Um, it's not necessarily, I need the cheapest cost because that affects service just like anything else. I mean, you pay for what you get on 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 um, tangible items, um, but you also pay for what you get on on, on service. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, and one other one, Rachel Ford. Uh, I'm not. Sh- uh, you said thank you so much. It was very productive and informative. So appreciate the positive comments too. So again, we appreciate your comments. Um, leave them uh, wherever it may be on this. Uh, on this web page you're watching it at or whatever uh we want to uh get to them more and, and engage with you uh, i think next month we're going to really dig into to more comments and really a lot of the comments we do see are, are kind of with that first comment about um i think some misunderstandings of of brokers and, and, and um so we're going to re- kind of dig into that next month a little bit more um of of what does a reputable broker do i think anything if there's there are a wide range. I mean, there's like 80, 90,000 brokers out there, right? And some range from one guy in his house to, I mean, ATS and our, our eight, nine offices to companies way bigger than us. Right. And so there's a, such a wide range and, and, but what, what does, what does an actual broker do? Um, what, what, you know, the profit margins, where does that go to? I mean, that's just not staying in the broker's pocket, but we're definitely going to talk about that and really dig into that next month. Um, so if, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, comments, you want, you want heard, answered, discussed, leave them below. Um, appreciate you guys coming in, Not a problem. Yeah, but we did, we me. did say one last thing. I mean, Dean, you are the grill guy, right? Like how many <laughs> grills do you own? Uh, depending on a given day. It varies. Oh, um, it does vary, uh, you know, because you gotta make sure you know, buy and sell. Make sure your wife isn't your listening deck. to this. Well, currently, currently on the deck, well, geez, that, that varies too. Um, I probably have 
on my deck at a given time, probably six to eight. What? Yeah. So okay, it, it, it depends. Um, Fourth that's July, cool. I'm for the, yeah. Do you do you have special plus. ones? Is one like oh, this is for the steaks and this one's for the pork chops? I mean, do it, like do they have sort different? Of, sort of the different sizes are for the different types of meats. So you get, you know if you're just gonna grill a four pack of burgers or something like that, you don't need a big monstrosity, you know? So you're not gonna, you, you don't want to light up that lump charcoal, right? right. It like, depends, right? It's just quick and easy. You know, you got it's summer, right? We're just talking about how busy everything is. So you got sports yeah. going on. I'm, oh, you know, yeah. s- softball with, with the daughter, things like that. Well, you get done with softball. What are you going to do? Well, you can fire up the grill. It's summer yeah. months. So you can fire it up before you go. If you're smoking something, maybe, you know, fire it up earlier in the evening or maybe the before you come to the office, depending on what's going on. Eight grills. You and your fancy Wi-Fi grills. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what well, happened to the good old Weber? I I have He's got probably got one of those. <laughs> I got one of those. Too. One of the eight. I got the, the, <laughs> no, those are in the storage. Those are the other 20 that are in the storage. <laughs> <laughs> or up at, up at the camper or something. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, thanks for tuning in. You guys, thanks for uh, thanks joining for me. Me. And, uh Yeah. I guess that's all I got. Thank you. Wolves and seven. Wolf.